In a world of Mamby Pamby Bible studies, there stands a man, bold and courageous enough to tackle the most difficult of Bible passages. This man will delve deeper, extract more meaning, and illuminate the darkest of passages. This man is your host, Brian Cook. This is the Hard Versus Podcast. Welcome to the Hard Versus Podcast, episode 17, Abstain from Meats, Acts 15, 29. Hard Verses, a podcast not afraid to take on the harder verses in the Bible. Each week we find difficult verses in God's Word. Now the verse this week is Acts fifteen twenty nine that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. Are we to abstain from meats Offered to idols today. And if we are, then what about other verses like 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 19? You know what? Say I then that the idol is anything, and that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. You going down to verse 25. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no questions for a conscious sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And it goes on to say, you know, that... Uh, that God has given us all these meats, and so don't ask no questions. And uh, it seems like Paul is saying it's okay to eat meat. So what is it? And the other thing is, is Christians not supposed to be drinking blood and eating things that are strangled? And so we will look at these after our sponsor. It's 2 a.m., January 1st, year 2000. Power's out. It's pitch black. You need light. If you planned ahead, you'll have one of these. Just wind it up. You'll have light and communication. Call now and get the ultimate Y2K survival kit from BeCalm.com. You'll receive the Sunburst, the premier wind-up and solar-powered flashlight and radio, a video resource guide with real advice from leading experts, a diagnostic computer program to test your PC. You'll receive three soup samples from Hourglass Foods, food storage you'll want to eat. Plus, you'll receive a step-by-step guide that will show you how to prepare without wasting a single penny. Call now and order your ultimate Y2K Survival Kit. You get the wind-up and solar-powered flashlight radio, video diagnostic software, food samples, and preparation guide. A $90 value, all for only $49.95. Call 1-800-303-8747 now and tell the operator to rush an ultimate Y2K Survival Kit to your home. Call now. And we're back. All right, going back over the initial verse, Acts chapter 15, verse 29, we have this uh, council of the Jews trying to decide, you know, what we're supposed to be telling the Gentiles, not necessarily like a vote, but seeing what God had to say, you know, what's been revealed. And there was some issue because the Jews were starting to to tell Gentiles, hey, you've got to be circumcised and you've got to do these things that Jewish people do. And in that discussion is Acts 15, verse 29, that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well, fare you well. And and so what it's indicating is that this is the message we're to give to the Gentiles, and let's clear out all this Jewish stuff and just give what is God's instructions for the New Testament church, which brings up this thing about idols. And, you know, what was this with idols or worshiping of idols and the meat involved? Well, going back and looking at the history of, of that time, what would occur for a Gentile in that area is at the feast of the pagans, they would bring, among other things, meat and offer it to the priest. 
and the priest would do his thing with it. And as part of his services, he would, would receive part of that meat. The person who brought and offered it would receive it. And many times, you know, that portion that was given would then be sold at the market. And, and so we see, um, according to Barclay, I, I was using his commentary on the Acts of the Apostles, and I will leave a, a note at the end of the... Well, I, I'll give you the, the notes at the end of it verbally, but then I'll also give you in the show notes what resources I use. But Barclay was saying... Uh, according to this, that no Christian must risk pollution by eating such meat for it has been offered to idols. And that's from Barclay's 1976 uh, Acts of the Apostles. All right, so uh, according to Barclay, uh, it would pollute you to eat that. All right, what about the strangled and the blood? Well, the Jews from Leviticus 17, from the actual law of Moses, God had said that life is in the blood. Do not eat the blood. Do not eat things that are strangled and don't eat, and don't eat the blood. The thing about strangling an animal is that it dies and the blood is still in it. And that was part of the law. Now, going back even before the law of Moses, back into Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3, you see that there was a law concerning blood and strangled animals prior to the Mosaic law. And that would be during the time of Noah. So Genesis 9 and 3 says, God said to Noah, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But verse 4 says, But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of the man. God was serious. Don't eat this or I will take your life. And so Noah was made aware. And think about that. Noah com- coming off of the ark and the law for all humanity. Don't eat the blood. Don't do it. It will cause me to require your life, the life of the animal and the life of anybody participating. All right. So going back to Acts chapter 15, it would make sense that we're not supposed to eat the blood and eat things that are strangled. Uh, one of the things I want to add to that, in Acts 15, if you go back one verse to verse 28, it says, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. And this is where our verse comes in after this. Notice what is good for the Holy Ghost, which indicates inspiration, which means it is inspired of God. These are the words of God. And to us, the apostles, and to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Whereas the Jews were laying on unnecessary things, the Jewish law, he's saying, let's not lay any more on you than what is necessary. And after saying that, after saying it was inspired of the Holy Ghost, after saying that we're not going to lay on you any more than what is absolutely required, this is where this verse comes into play. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. So these four areas, it seems by inspiration that the New Testament church was not supposed to uh, have meats that were sacrificed to idols, blood, strangled, and fornication. All right, so one of the, uh, the I guess, theories is brought by Barclay and uh, Lennox, and I'm sorry, not Lennox, but Linsky. And Linsky is being quoted in my Apologetics Press article that I used also, also at the end of the show notes. But what he was saying is that this would ease tension between the Jew and the Gentile, which I'm not 100% convinced of. I mean, it would, but that's not the reason. I would think that because the Holy Spirit gave this, that it would be for the church itself. All right, so what about 1 Corinthians, though, which is also given by inspiration? Paul is writing by inspiration in 1 Corinthians. And what does he say in 1 Corinthians starting 19? What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? Paul is saying it doesn't matter. I mean, the, the idol is nothing. It's just a piece of meat. 
And you're going down to verse 25, it says, Whatsoever is sold in the shambles or the market, that eat, asking no questions for conscience' sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice and idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience' sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Verse 29. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judge of another man's conscience? For if I, by grace, be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Whether there be eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Paul, in 1 Corinthians, seems to say, you can eat it. That it doesn't mean anything. So we've got a dilemma where we have one section in Acts saying, don't do it, by the Holy Spirit, and then 1 Corinthians, by the Holy Spirit, saying, do it. So what is it that we are not to do? I want us to consider one thing about uh, this feast. And I guess the way that I can go to sleep tonight and have this rectified in my head is to say that the act of eating this in participation of the debauchery and the sinfulness of the idol feasts, they connect it to actually eating the meat. Now, according to 1 Corinthians, the actual eating of the meat is not inherently sinful. But the fact that you go and then participate where the idol meat is being eaten, that is. And that would be the, the connection with the fornication because when you had those worshipers of Venus and Diana, uh, there was a lot of fornication going on. Matter of fact, they had full-time prostitutes that worked in the temple as part of the worship. And so don't be part of that. Don't be going up there and eating with those guys. But if you're in the marketplace... I mean, there's really no way you can tell whether a piece of meat has been offered to idols or not. If the priest decides to take, the heathen priest decides to take his portion of it and go sell it in the market, there's no ink stamp on that piece of meat indicating whether it's idol meat or not. So in that case, you're really not going to know. And if you did ask and did know, it doesn't mean anything because you're not participating in the worship. So, what are we to do? Well, first of all, it's going to be hard for Americans to find meat offered to idols. Uh, But I would equate that to, uh, like, alcohol. Uh, That, uh, for instance, you have certain big box stores that sell groceries that also sell alcohol. Uh, Does that mean that you don't go and buy your groceries there? Well... It's becoming harder and more difficult to find places that do not sell alcohol. But we are able to go in and get our food from a, an establishment that sells alcohol, but we're not drinking the alcohol. All right, I, I guess that's about the closest thing I can think of today uh, that would equate to that. But no idols. Well, I don't know anybody who's doing idol worship around here. All right. The other side of that is about the drinking of the blood and other things strangled. Now, as far as I know, that seems to be still a prohibition today because Paul is not okaying that in his uh, letter to the Corinthians. And I'll go back to the other thing that when Noah came off the boat, he was instructed to do that before the law of Moses, which would mean that God is wanting humanity to not eat blood and uh, to not eat things that are strangled. And so, to be safe, I would not eat anything that had um, raw blood or strangled. Now, as far as a rare steak, that's not what they're talking about. Because it is impossible to get every bit of blood out of a piece of meat. It is virtually impossible to do that. But what he's talking about is 
is like in Leviticus saying that life is in the blood. There's something symbolic about that life flowing substance still being in it uh, that that it needs to be drained out. And even the priests, when they would offer up those sacrifices, that there would still be, they would not be so cooked that there would be no blood in it. You just don't see that. So in that case, you are allowed to eat a rare steak. You're just not allowed to drink or eat blood. All right. Abstain from meats. Not really. Just don't be going to the feast of Diana or Venus and be partakers of what they're doing up there. Even if you're not getting with the prostitutes, do not be in that, in, um, I guess you'd say, in the, in the feast with them. You come across some meat that's been offered to idols, you have no idea, then eat it. Don't ask the question, just eat it. Again, you're going to have some trouble finding that in America. All right. So we got some lessons for us today. I got three things we can take away from this besides, you know, us arguing back and forth about abstaining from meats and strangling them of animals and blood. Number one, don't add to or take away from God's word. You know, don't don't be saying like the Jews are saying you have to be circumcised. Uh, no, just just say what we're supposed to be doing. Don't add to or take away from it. Just go by what God's Word says to do. Number two, don't do things that will cause others to stumble. Notice the attitude. He's saying that for conscience sake of the other person in 1 Corinthians, don't do it. You know, don't do things just to make people saying, you, I've got the liberty to do it. For instance, there are still people today. Am I being the sound of my voice that says you are required to wear a suit and tie to every church service, regardless of what day of the week it is? Well, there's really not any Bible for that. But if it offends somebody, I, I mean, I wear a tie most any time uh, just because it might offend somebody. Not because it's necessarily biblical, uh, but because it might offend somebody. So be aware of what's offensive to people and try to be gentle with them. Uh, number three, take some time on the hard verses and dig in until you get a decent answer. Don't skip. Use your resources. And speaking of resources, let me tell you what I used in this lesson today. Number one, I used Albert Barnes, the eSword module. His commentary, it's actually, it says Barnes on your tab up there. I, I used an actual book. Get this. I used an actual book to get some of this. I used two books. Uh, no, no, no. Technically, one book and then one article off the web. But the book was The Acts of the Apostles by William Barclay. And then I used an article on Apologetics Press. Uh, which I have linked in the show notes. I uh, also use the Burton Kaufman commentary, also an eSword module. All right, now, I will just tell you this. Everything except for Barclay are free. Uh, you just go and, and download them into eSword. They are free. You can go to the Apologetics Express uh, website and download it for free. I'm not talking about getting expensive books. All right, so that's the tools I use to get the information for today's lesson. All right, let me give you some things you can do. Number one, if you are lost, when I start talking about the Mosaic Law and maybe the law given to Noah, maybe when I'm talking about the New Testament law, if you kind of know, you know, like you're saying, ah, that sounds familiar, but I really don't know. If I started asking you some difficult questions, you'd be like, I really don't know. Tell me. Yeah. All right. If you are having difficulty in nailing down when certain laws were enacted by God Himself, then you need to be taking the new Acts Bible Genius Bible study. Let me tell you why. This particular Bible study, I will be going not only to the Old Testament, but then to the New, and even into the future of the church, all because Acts deals with that. And I will take time to, to build up the framework to show you where these things are. All right, so where do you find that? 
Well, that's at PreacherBrian.com. Spell it with a Y, PreacherBrian.com. And you're saying, man, that sounds expensive. Oh, it's absolutely expensive. It's free. So just go in there and look. It's under Bible Genius Bible Study, and you can download each chapter as they are done and um, avail yourself to that resource. Of course, if you have any questions, just holler at me. Also, subscribe and rate. If you vote for me, all of your wildest dreams will come true. On the iTunes or whatever platform you're on, if you're capable of doing that, that's one way to support the show. I will tell you, it's been a phenomenal, phenomenal month as far as downloads are concerned, and I am very proud to call you my listenership. So continue doing the great work that you're doing. And so subscribe and rate. And there's also there's additional videos and podcast material on the YouTube channel, Hard Versus. Just search Hard Versus in your YouTube search bar, and it will come up. And that's it. That's all I have for you. And remember that the verses are not so hard when you have help. See you next week. No representation is made that the quality of the ministry services to be performed is greater than the quality of ministry services performed by other preachers.